Hi, I'm Terry Cron with Heavy Duty Powertrain. I'm the owner and I uh, offer online tech support for dealing with electronic issues, uh, wiring harnesses, sensors, uh, the engine computer or ECM for LTM 11 and 14 inches. My experience is uh, somewhere around 10 years now dealing with this stuff. Um, this will be our April 2009 tip of the month. And it will be titled, Engine Won't Start. What do you, what do you do? And make sure, you know, do you really need an ECM? And on that note, I'd rather help you guys out in advance to uh, determine that you've uh, done everything to make sure that uh, you know, if something isn't badly shorted out and what to look for before you purchase an ECM from us. So, uh, first off, when you turn the key on, the check engine and stop engine light should cycle through normally. If they're not, then either the ECM isn't getting power to it or the ECM has been shorted out and it's not communicating anymore. So, on that note, if it doesn't cycle through, then uh, most likely you would uh, go out to your fuel solenoid, you're probably not getting any power to it. So the next step is to check the input power supplying the ECM. And that comes in from your OEM harness, and uh, branches off to your injector harness and uh, that's where all the power comes in. So, you know, you can go up your batteries first, make sure the batteries all check out good, make sure you haven't got a shorted out cell or, or the batteries are real low. If it drops below 6.2 volts, I think that's the common spec on it. It won't fire up the ECM, won't communicate or do anything. So, first off, you start at your batteries and look at your ground going to your frame. Uh, some of these uh, ECMs pull their power off the starter solenoid and the ground of the starter body, which uh, that is such a ridiculous setup because when you're cranking, you could very well drop below 6.2 volts and it puts the ECM in a low voltage situation constantly and it'll burn it up eventually. So if you do have that set up, I'd suggest finding the two fuses in between the ECM and the firewall. There should be two 10 amp or 15 amp fuses and a ground wire. Uh, I'm not sure, don't quote me, but I think the hops are purple, and I'm not sure about the uh, color of the ground, but I would get in there in between the ECM and the firewall and snip those wires, cap them off, and disconnect it from the starter and the ground there, at least the starter solenoid, so you don't have any chance to shorten out, and I'd run them to one battery. Now, if you get to the two fuses, this is unswitched 12 volt. Uh, supply to the ECM and then you need to check that on both of those fuses. If one of them's burnt out then you definitely I would suggest rewiring both of them anyways to bypass that. Every once in a while uh, low voltage can be in the two hots and the one ground or bottle together there they get so hot and they fuse together and that burns up the ECM and blows fuses. So, you know, you need to make sure you, you get that behind you. And those two fuses or two wires branch off to two pair that go up to your injector harness. And uh, they are all they're unswitched for and a ground that you see them needs that and then you've got one key switch that goes to that injector harness but that's what turns on the ECM so you basically got five hots that you need uh, you will find a diagram of that 
uh, showing you the pin numbers and what have you on our website under uh, under the uh, ECM diagrams. Uh, if you've got power going to it and you've done all your homework and your field solenoid still doesn't open up, then your ECM is bad. And that's pretty much it. And um, be sure and keep in mind that your injector harness is your high voltage end of things. And an injector solenoid, if it shorts out, or an injector harness shorts out between each other or to the block, it, it'll burn a hole right through the ECM sometimes. So before you check out all these harnesses, like I've said previously, if they're in doubt, you know, spend six, seven hundred bucks and get your new sensor and injector harness on there and all mount your six injectors. The risk resistance value isn't really important. The important thing is that there's no large variance in resistance from each injector. If you do find one that's way off, then replace it. And that's pretty much it. So if you need more uh, more input, is uh, you can find us at www.heavydutypowertrain.com. That's heavy duty power train and train is spelled T R A I N dot com. And you can find us also on another website called SaveSave.com. And uh, if you need to get a hold of me, uh, you can get a hold of me on my cell. I still have the Florida cell number 727 424 6163. Hope that helps you out on uh, diagnosing and uh, making sure that uh, you really need an ECM. Thank you.